Hey you guys, it's Monica and welcome back. Um, today we are going to be making some glitter wine glasses. And so um, my last glitter wine glass video was a big hit. So we're gonna do it again. And so, but this time we're gonna use Bright Tone. So these are just a couple of 20 ounce wine glasses from the Dollar Tree that are the same wine glasses that I used in the last tutorial. Um, I'm gonna prep them the same, so I'm just using a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and just making sure there's no like greasiness or fingerprints or anything like that. And just making sure it's all clean. You're gonna see me do the first one with it just on my hand. Then I do the other one on a ball. Um, and so yeah, I decided to make this video because I got, like I said, my other wine glass video is my most watched video. I get a lot of comments and a lot of questions. And so the biggest thing was that people were confused about the use of the epoxy, um, mainly being that if you don't use epoxy, you really don't know much about it and that's okay. Um, and so I'm doing this one as an alternative because for some people, for some reason, people think when epoxy, even if it's cured, it's like dangerous. When epoxy is cured, it's essentially plastic. Um, so it is not dangerous. It's not dangerous to drink out of. Make sure you're using an FDA compliant epoxy if you choose to do epoxy instead of bright tone. I will leave a link to my other video and they are completely safe to drink out of even if you epoxy up to the rim. But again, some people still aren't comfortable with that and I get it. So here's the alternative. So we're going to be using two different glitters. This, the blue one is Dirty 30 and the purple one that's not correct. <laughs> the blue one is Virgo and the purple one is Dirty 30. Um, those are just two glitters from my birthday collection that came out last month and so I decided to do a couple of wine glasses in these. And so my initial thought was that I was going to just do like some glitter on the top, some glitter on the bottom and leave like a see-through space. What You'll see that once I got off camera I was like I was looking at them while they were drying and I'm like mm -mm. I'm going to do the whole thing because that's just what I wanted to do. So kind of just ignore the technique and everything you see me doing. You can do this if you want to. You want to do the ombre. Just make sure like you get the ombre effect going. But I ended up um, glittering the whole cup on both of the cups. So just FYI. So yeah, so I'm just trying to give you guys some trips, tricks and tips um, based on a lot of the comments that I got in my last video. And so what I am using to apply the glitter is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a type of decoupage, glue, whatever you want to call it, adhesive that I'm using to bond the glitter to the cup. And so I prefer to use Mod Podge in this case just because it's just my preferred method to do it. Um, you could use something like Quick Coat or you could use something like uh, Epoxy if you wanted to, but I choose to do Mod Podge. What you see me doing now is that because this is a chunky glitter, I am taking parchment paper and I'm rolling it against it and pressing it against it in order to flatten that out because that will lessen the amount of bright tone layers that I will have to do on my cup. It's very That step is very, very important. If you skip any step, don't skip that one because it'll if you don't flatten out that chunky glitter, it'll just make everything a nightmare and you'll be doing bright tone layers forever. Take my word for it. I promise y'all. Um, and so yeah, now I'm just gonna glitter this other cup with Virgo. And again, you're gonna see me doing the same thing that I did to the other cup, but I, off camera, I ended up just going back in and filling in that space with all of the glitter and covering the whole cup. And so and I only did one layer of glitter on each cup, that was sufficient. Um, if you also want to, you can also paint the cup. If you want to, prior to applying the glitter, you can use like acrylic paint, uh, spray paint, anything like that but you really, honestly, you really don't need to. Um, and yes, a lot of people ask, is it safe to use on glass? Yes, you can use Mod Podge, Epoxy, and Bright Tone on glass. It is all completely safe. And y'all remember, like, when this stuff is cured, it is safe. I would never, not intentionally, <laughs> I always tell people when I get, when they get in the car with me and I start driving real dangerous and they get kind of scared, I'm like, listen, I would never kill us intentionally. If we die in this car, I didn't mean for that to happen. So if you ever see me doing something and eight years later it comes out that that product was killing us like most everything in this world, it wasn't intentional. And so next I'm using Quick Code. This is from Counterculture DIY. I will leave a link to everything that I'm using below. And so this is just a sealer. Highly recommend this if you're able to get it. Um, just as another method of making sure your gl glitter is flat, lessening the amount of bright tone or epoxy that you would have to use. Um, on your cup and so I am doing a total I did a total of two layers of quick coat on this cup in case anyone was wondering I'm only going to show you one layer 
And this is my multi cup turner. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it on this channel, but I have a three cup multi cup turner. Um, love it. It's very affordable. And this is like a compact design. Like in total, it's only like 18 inches long. So if you're working in a small space or you don't just have, don't have a lot of counter space or real estate for all your setup, then this is a great uh, tumbler turn again. And it was only like 85 bucks. So it's a great deal. Small company you can find on Etsy and I will leave a link to it below. And so let's start with the bright tone. And so you see, I got my bright tone in a little bottle. This is left over from what I had. You're like, is that going to be enough? Girl, no. I had ordered more in anticipation for this video. And so now I'm just going to go through and show you guys the coats. I apply the coats pretty thin with a brush. And so I'll show you like when I stop and sand and all that. And so some of y'all are probably like, wait girl you're doing bright tone i know right and so i still had this bright tone left as you can see and so you know i'm an adult now i just turned 30 we're using glitter from my my dirty 30 collection my birthday collection and i'm like what where what does my problem lie with this product because it's not the product and honestly it wasn't dave from counterculture coming under my comment kind of coming under my video make a comment it's some of y'all y'all get on the internet and think y'all can just say what y'all want, do what y'all want. And this is a, for the new people, this is a typical Monica rant. Is that y'all can't get mad at people for not doing things the way you do them or not doing things how you think it should be done. I'm doing my best, y'all. Work with your girl. And so, yeah, I'm like, well, I'm going to come back on here and I'm going to try to do it the way y'all think it should be done. And at the end of the day, I do think Bright Tone is a good product. And I do think it's a good alternative to epoxy. It's just some of y'all really come out y'all face on the internet. Y'all got to stop because, like I tell people, I am tough in real life. If you're not going to pull up to my bins and talk that smack, because <laughs> I'm really about that life. Somebody honked their horn at me because I didn't see the light turn red. And I said, if you're not ready to get put your car in park and get out, don't honk your, don't honk your horn at me. Because my mama told me I need to stop doing stuff like that. But I do not care. But anyways, okay. So... I have done four coats of Bright Tone at this point, four pretty thin coats of Bright Tone, and now I am just sanding it. And so the point is just sanding it is that we're still trying to make sure we're, get, um, we're getting, and y'all, I'm making all this up. This is what I'm assuming. I'm sure Dave from Bright Tone will come and correct me if I am wrong, or all of y'all crazies that I haven't blocked, y'all can come and correct me if I am wrong. And so... They say that you should, after a few layers, you should come and sand it because it, you know, increases adhesion and it helps make it smoother as you apply more and more coats. So that is what I'm doing. I'm just taking some sandpaper and I am just giving them like a little dust and a nice little buffing, you know, so we can keep it moving. And so now we are going in and doing more coats. And so the first, I would say eight coats, I did fairly thin. Um... And after I did those eight coats, I'll show you, um, I was ready to start getting it in. I was ready to start building it up, getting it smooth and all that. Because these first, like the first 10 coats, and I anticipated to do about 20 coats based on like other like Starbucks cups and stuff I've done um, with Bright Tone. Um, so I knew I was going to be in this for the long haul. Ooh, y'all are probably asking me how long between coats. The first eight coats, I did two hours between them. And then as I got more and more coats, because it's getting more and more thicker, in my mind that needs more and more time to dry, I did three hours um, between coats. So first 10 coats, about two hours between. After that, about three to four hours in between. Because this I did this on the weekend, y'all. I was out in the streets. So yeah, so <laughs> the time between coats got a little more and more. All right, so we've done eight coats, and I'm going to show you guys how I clean these up. So this is really easy with Bright Tone. Um, you might get like a little spillage over when you're painting them, when you're brushing on the product. And so you can just really just take an X-Acto knife. This is also like the Dollar Tree bootleg X-Acto knife. Um, I think they call it like a utility knife. And I'm just going around the rim and cleaning up all that, making it nice and clean. No, it won't break your seal. Um, or anything that you have going on with that is really just extra product around your rim. But you do want to take it off every five-ish coats and make sure you do this. I did do this about every five coats on my cup just to keep it clean. The good thing I do like about Bright Tone is that if you don't let it sit 
Um, and I'll talk about curing in a minute. If you don't let it just sit too long and like if you pull it off after those layers, this stuff comes up like a sticker. Well, not like a sticker. That's not a good example. But it comes up very easily. And if you get any on the inside of the cup, you can honestly just take a little bit of sandpaper and buff in that area and it'll come right off. So that's the one thing I do like about it over epoxy. Because once epoxy cures on the rim, baby, I be having to get my drill out sometimes to get it off my rim or if it gets inside of my cup. I be having to get out acetone. And with bright tone, you don't have to do that. So I do um, like that about it. So now we're just going to keep going. I'm not going to keep boring y'all because it's very repetitive. It takes about a minute or two per glass to do this, do this step and you just walk away. Um, the only thing is you do like you do have to come back every few hours and do it. So it, that is very annoying because I, you know, like I said, it was the weekend. I was quick to forget and I'd be sitting in the house like, God dang it, it's been four and a half hours and them things are just in there burning on the spinner. Let me go in here and recode them. All right. So at this point, I did another seven coats on the cup and we are at about 16. Well, not about. There are 16 total uh, layers on this cup. And so at this point is where you want to start sanding for your smoothness. And so much like when you're doing an epoxied tumbler, epoxy cup, wine glass, whatever it is, whatever you've epoxied, now we're trying to work on our smoothness. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking down those high points and then what you're going to see me do, I'm going to move over to my other desk and I'm going to start making it smooth. I want it to be smooth. I don't really want to feel too many hills and valleys. I want it to be smooth because what that's going to mean and as we finish building up our um, cup is that it's going to finish smooth. And so that's very important. So at this point, don't just like sand just the sand. Now you're sanding to get it nice and smooth, nice and even, making sure that, you know, you're you're smoothing out all those peaks, valleys and all that and that you it's very cohesive. You have enough coats to do this. You're probably honestly sand off two or three coats. Don't worry about it because we're going to finish it up. And also at this point, if you wanted to add a decal to your cup, a sticker, um, any type of vinyl, anything, this is the point after you get it nice and smooth. Because remember, we want to apply our vinyl on something that is smooth. It's at this point is that you would add your vinyl, your decal, your sticker, all that. And so what I like to do is I turn my cup upside down because um, this gives me really good leverage. And I just go to town smoothing it out so y'all see me i'm smoothing that thing you want to get it nice and smooth and i'm using some um sandpaper from the dollar tree girl i do not like it but that's a whole nother story all right so after this i did five more coats you could definitely do i could win five more if i wanted to but this is what we're left with look at that shine it looks so good you guys i was super satisfied with the color selection i was super satisfied with how it's finished i wanted to show you guys it's not thick at all you can see that it looks like it's mostly glass. It's not thick at all. They turned out very nice, very beautiful. I'm very satisfied. You can see like when I turn it to the side, look at the profile, boom, smooth. Very nice. <laughs> and so that's all I got for you guys. If you got any comments or questions, please leave them below. I will be down there helping you guys out. Um, don't forget to check out our website, period6glitter.com. Subscribe to the channel here, like the video. Follow us on Instagram at period6designs. Follow us on TikTok at period6glitter. And I think that's it. And I will see you guys in the next one.